the implications, whether uh, we thought it should have been not guilty or not. But already there is statements all the way up to the president uh, because the whole country is discussing the case. Here's what President Obama had to say. He said, we are a nation of laws and a jury has spoken. I now ask every American to respect the call for calm reflection from two parents who lost their young son. We should ask ourselves if we're doing all we can to stem the tide of gun violence that claims too many lives across this country on a daily basis. Now, of course, if you mention gun violence or race, uh, the right wing will lose their minds. This isn't about race, it's not about guns. Well, then what the hell is it about? Well, why is the whole country talking about it if it's not any of those things? Of course it has to do with guns. Of course it had to do with race. That's, of course, the justifications that they use for never talking about serious issues they don't want to talk about. And yes, I think guns had a huge, huge, huge part of it. If Zimmerman didn't have a gun, Trayvon Martin would be alive today. You can't dispute that. So the guns that you love, whether you're a left wing or right wing, and I know it cuts across lines, those guns kill Trayvon Martin. If there were no guns, Trayvon Martin's alive today. If you argue anything else, you're totally disingenuous. You're lying and you're making a fool of yourself. All right, now uh, we go to the major issue everybody's talking about today. Should the feds pick up the case now that we got a not guilty verdict? Well, Eric Holder, our attorney general, uh, addressed that. Let's talk. Let's watch. We are also mindful of, of the pain felt by our nation surrounding the tragic, unnecessary shooting death of Trayvon Martin in Sanford, Florida last year. And we are cognizant of the fact that the state trial reached its conclusion over the weekend. As parents, as engaged citizens, and as leaders who stand vigilant against violence in communities across the country, the Deltas are deeply and rightly concerned about this case. The Justice Department shares your concern. I share your concern. And as we first acknowledged last spring, we have opened an investigation into this matter. So what are they going to do with that investigation? Well, we're going to discuss that now. Let me bring the panel. Anna Kasparian is here. J.R. Jackson, of course, as usual. It's a full panel today. Tommy Christopher from Media. He covers the White House beat there and media as well. Michael Schur, host of the War Room, is also with us. And as you see there, uh, Vincent Sutherland joins us. He's the senior counsel at the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund. Vincent, let me start with you uh, because uh, the NAACP is pushing the idea of a the federal government looking into this and possibly trying Zimmerman again. Uh, I, to be honest with you, uh, I didn't like the decision. I thought it should have been manslaughter, but I'm very uncomfortable with trying Zimmerman again. Tell me why we should, if that's what you believe. Well, thank you for having me. First of all, I think, I think that, that clearly this case calls out and cries out for further investigation by the federal government to ensure that there are no uh, civil rights violations. Um, and I, I think that basically the federal government's role in this case, as it has played in the past, the Department of Justice has, has, has validated and vindicated and protected the rights of African Americans and other people of color in this country when the state has failed to do so. And, and that's part and parcel of the Department of Justice's role. And so I feel like their investigation into this case is critical, um, at the very least, to determine whether or not civil rights violations did occur and that Zimmerman should be held accountable for his actions. So Vincent, who would have done the civil rights violations? Would it have been the police, the prosecutors? Who, who would be responsible for that? Or, or, or you're saying Zimmerman did the civil rights violations, but I, I always get confused by this because I, I honestly, I don't think it makes much sense. Uh, as much as I wanted the Rodney King cops put away, I didn't agree with that decision on the federal level either. And I'm sure I'm going to have wide disagreement here on the panel in a minute. But it's, couldn't we, under this rubric, then say, okay, well, if we don't get Bradley Manning in a court martial, let's try him on a federal level. Well, if we didn't get him on the federal level, let's try him on a state level. They're all technically slightly different charges, so we can just keep ch charging someone uh, ad nauseum. Sure. Well the, well, the difference here in this particular case is that there's actually a statute on point, um, the, the, the Shepard James Byrd uh, Federal Hate Crimes Act of 2009. And, and that statute allows for the federal government, the Department of Justice, to prosecute um, someone like uh, Mr. Zimmerman um, if, if they're able to find and determine that Mr. Zimmerman 
killed Trayvon Martin because of his race. And so that is going to be the centerpiece, I believe, of, of the Department of Justice's investigation. And the Legal Defense Fund is going to, to do all it can to ensure um, that the Department of Justice has all the information it needs about its legal options in terms of civil rights statutes and violations. All right, Vincent, before I go to everybody else, one last thing on this. So, look, I thought it was hard to prove this case to begin with, but I thought the prosecution proved enough that it was manslaughter. Apparently the jury didn't agree with me. Fine, that's how things work, okay. But when it comes to proving that it was definitely about race, beyond a reasonable doubt, do you, you think there really any prayer that they could actually do that? Well, we remain hopeful. Um, the, the, the difference in the, in the federal realm and with the federal investigation is that we're looking at the case through a different lens, through a different, through a different prism. Um, you'll notice in the state trial that, that basically no mention of race was made. The court precluded any mention of racial profiling, which we all know that's exactly what happened in this particular case, that Mr. Zimmerman approached Mr. Martin because of his race, that he, that he saw him immediately as a suspect because of his race, but that he presumed him guilty because of his race. And so the federal investigation will hopefully unearth um, what exactly Mr. Zimmerman's motivation and intent was on that night when he killed Trayvon Martin. All right, let me open it up to everybody else. Michael, Tommy, all you guys here. Does anybody well, think that they can actually prove that case? Well, the thing that I thought was interesting is that during his closing argument, Mark O'Mara actually sort of argued that he was profiling Trayvon, that he was justified in, in suspecting Trayvon because he was black. So, I mean, if that's all they have to prove, then, well, O'Mara said it. You know, he said, uh, you know, th this, this kid looked just like these other young black kids who had, uh, who had been suspected of crimes, and that's why everybody was upset, and that's why George Zimmerman was, uh, was uh, suspecting him. But well, I that's don't, interesting. I don't, I don't think that that's, I, I don't think that that's, you know, I, we live in a country where people seriously sit down and cannot decide which is worse, cracker or the N-word. And so I don't think you're going to get a jury of people who are going to, to be able to, uh, to, find, to make a finding in a case like that without, I mean, you know, without the most explicit type of evidence that, that, that just isn't there right now. Uh, you know, you get a jury of 12 people like me who, you know, I, I, I feel like it, it was a shame that the prosecution didn't introduce evidence from George Zimmerman's MySpace page where he talks about every Mexican he runs into pulling a knife on him. I feel like things like that might have affected the jury, but I, I mean, the, 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 the view of, of the majority of people in this country on race is such that unless you have, you know, a, a, a pillowcase, a burning cross, and, you know, the N-word scratched into somebody's body. Uh, it, I, people are in denial about this stuff, and I don't think you get 12 people to convict. Yeah, there's a ton of great points made there by Tommy. You know, even the evidence that Tommy gives, I still think they couldn't convict beyond the, the a reasonable doubt thing, John, at the sorry, federal Jake, level. The, 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 the other problem is that the best witness, the only witness to this crime, was killed. You know, and, and that makes, that's what made it hard for the prosecution. That's what would make it hard uh, for the federal, for, at the federal level, too, because, because, you know, Trayvon Martin's dead. He can't speak. He can't say what George Zimmerman said to him. Well, and that's, I mean, that, there's a reason why killers kill witnesses. And his, yeah. this is it. And, and, and look, I've been in a rage all day about uh, this situation because, I, you know, based on how this trial went, anybody can claim self-defense. And that's it. As, as long as you make sure there's no witnesses and you didn't just wound the guy, you cur killed him, you murdered him, then you're very, very, very likely to get away with it. And then the second thing that does is it puts all gun owners at a significant, gigantic disadvantage. If you got a gun, well, you can pick any fight you like, you can murder anyone you like. If you don't have a gun, I mean, look, this goes, this goes JR, to something we were discussing off air. What's a black kid or any kid supposed to do? If you don't have a gun and a guy comes up and picks a fight with you and he's got a gun, so, you know, all these Zimmerman fans now, and they're fans, that's what they are. They're fans of this murderer. They're all over. It's Ted Nugent, it's online, it's Fox News. They, they literally are rejoicing that this guy got away with killing a 17-year-old kid. Now, but if you're the kid, well, what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to say, I'm sorry, Massa, I'm sorry? The, this is the question that never gets asked. That's the question once it comes to that point when someone is making the point of, well, it doesn't matter what really happened. I mean, this, you can't prove that beyond this. But when you don't want to talk about the issues because you're trying to continue that same status quo, the, the situation we're in where you get to be racist, you get to have your thoughts, and you get to really continue, like, seek out someone that you dislike or maybe you're afraid of just to say, uh, that's the way I want to do that in this country. And, and when, you don't, when you don't want it to get changed, 
then that means you're one of those people. It's, it's not that it's not they're, they're big fans of George Zimmerman. They're just like him. They have the same thoughts that he has. So when they, they associate yep. themselves with the things he thinks, they're like, well, I would have done the same thing. It's a black person, right? Yeah, that's why they keep calling Trayvon a thug, even though he was a 17-year-old kid in khakis with Skittles in his pocket. What part of that is a thug? Yeah, khakis that were extremely tight and cuffed at the bottom. I mean, I, I, when, you, when I saw the picture of him laying dead on the grass, I, it was just the hardest thing to look at because he looks like this regular teenage kid. But that's you know, JR's point, because to us he looks like a regular teenage yeah. kid. But to them, to the Ted Nugents of the world, to all the Zimmerman fans in the world, he looks like a criminal because he's black. And, they don't look at the khaki pants. They don't look at the Skittles. Say, say that again. What? Yeah, I mean, listen to the stuff that comes out of their mouths about Trayvon Martin. It, it, it blows my mind. You know, uh, 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 I, are we looking at the same person? You know, I mean, this is a kid, like you said, 17 years old. He's got a pack of Skittles. Uh, he's got a, a, a can of iced tea. And, you know, as, as far as they could prove in court, that's the thing that blows my mind. This kid as far as the jury knew, has never even been in a fight in his life, and they're going to believe that he just suddenly attacks this guy who studied martial arts for a year and a half. That's what they're going to believe. The jury had no common sense. They didn't use any common sense. And it was because I, I truly believe that, you know, they allowed the fear that Mark O'Mara described and has tried to legitimize in his closing argument, that that overrode their common sense. So, all right, got to give Michael the last word in this segment. Uh, you know, Michael, there's so much to discuss here, but one of the things is I just want to clarify, I, I don't know, I'm not angry with the jury. I wasn't there every minute of the trial, and, and they have a tough job, and it's beyond a reasonable doubt, et cetera. My problem is with the cops in the first place that didn't even investigate Zimmerman and, and we didn't charge him for 44 days. And now my problem is with, with all the Zimmerman fans who are, like, throwing a party that he got away with it. Right. Uh, well, the, fan, the whole idea of these fans is, is so absurd and so offensive. And then you had Newt Gingrich on NBC today saying that, they're like, that the, uh, the Trayvon supporters are like a lynch mob for George Zimmerman uh, because these people didn't watch all the, all the uh, testimony in the trial. But yet, the wow. people who celebrate, the people who celebrate, and he said lynch mob, the people who celebrate are allowed somehow to, to celebrate, even though they presumably didn't watch all of the trial either. And you know, I, I, you know, Jenk, that I'm a, uh, I'm kind of a glass uh, half full guy, uh, and and so when I hear Tommy list all of these things, and I know that in a, in a civil trial, uh, the Justice Department does go for a civil rights case here, uh, the burden of proof is very different, uh, and also this conversation that we are having and that the people are having all over our country and probably beyond its borders wouldn't be happening because the conversation may have gone to jail with George Zimmerman. So while I I, I abhor the decision of this jury of six, which I think is ridiculous, also, but that's a entirely different conversation yeah. at least at least people continue having this conversation at least the civil rights division of the of the justice department is getting involved in this so i think it is actually a good thing that they are doing that at the justice department. all right we got to take a break here yeah, uh, Vincent, can I I just hope... throw one more thing in, in there Jen? Hey, and, and that is that if there's a silver lining here it's that all these people celebrating now we know who they are and I, yeah. I, that's one thing I do like. I like knowing who's who. And yeah. so, you know what? Keep celebrating because we want to know who you are. Yeah, no, no, that's a great point. Work. And everybody's celebrating today. I'll go, anyone, let's just clarify. Anyone who calls Trayvon a thug today is a racist. Flat out, period, no question at all. You hear someone call Trayvon a thug today? Mark it down in your notebook. Okay, watch out for this guy. He's a racist, okay? All right, when we come back, we're not done with this case yet. George Zimmerman gets his gun back. All right, we, there's so much more to discuss on that front. We'll come right back. You better be careful. It better, better be the right circumstances. The law allows an awful lot of people to carry guns. That doesn't mean they all should. 